I'm Marin, and this is Post-its and Pens. Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marin, and here you will find a little beauty, a little books, and a little teaching content. So if that sounds like something you might enjoy, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around and join me in my little corner of YouTube. In today's video, I am going to go through my May reading recap, where I will let you know what books I read, what I thought about them, and I will also give you a brief synopsis of the book in case you are interested in checking them out yourself. I will also let you know if I achieved my reading goal of finishing my May TBR, which I will link up in the cards here. So let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm going to go ahead and go through the books in the order that I read them this month. I will give you the title and the author, a synopsis, my star rating, and some overall thoughts, and I will also let you know the date of when I finished reading the book. The first book that I finished in May was actually completed on May 2nd. It was Eternity by Elizabeth Miles. I will put the cover here because it was a library book, so I no longer have the book in my hands. This was the conclusion to the Fury trilogy, so I'm not going to go too in-depth regarding what happened or even read you the actual synopsis since it contains spoilers for the first two books. I will just read you the quick little tagline that they have on Goodreads. So it says, Secrets and revenge make for desperate measures and fateful choices in this gripping conclusion to the Fury trilogy. So I really enjoyed the Fury trilogy. I felt like it got stronger as the series went on for sure. The last book was definitely the strongest of the three, and I felt like it nicely wrapped up the series. There was a lot of action. I was eagerly turning the pages to try to see what was going to happen, and I felt like overall it was a solid ending, which is not always the case. If you like Greek mythology retellings, you may want to go ahead and pick this trilogy up, but just be forewarned that the first book is pretty slow and the series does get better as it goes along. In the end, I gave this one four stars and I'm very glad that I could cross off another series from my TBR. The second book that I finished in the month of May was The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Again, here's the cover on the off chance you haven't seen it. This book was one that I listened to on audio and I finished it on May 4th. I will just read you again a very quick synopsis of it. It says, this is a timeless love story set in a secret underground world, a place of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships that sail upon a starless sea. So basically it tells the story of Zachary who stumbles upon this underground library or kind of a archive, I suppose would be a better word, and kind of gets dragged into this whole adventure slash action story. It's very difficult to describe just like Aaron Morgenstern's previous book, The Night Circus, but I felt like it was just as kind of magical and fun as the first book, although I did not like it quite as much as The Night Circus. In the end, I did give it four stars, probably more like four and a half stars. And if you liked The Night Circus, I do feel like you would like this one. So I would recommend it if you liked her writing style in that first book because they are very similar. The third book that I read in May was The Fiercest Joy by Shanna Abe. Again, the cover's here. This is, once again, the third in a trilogy, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with the synopsis, but it basically follows a girl named Eleanor who discovers that she is not human. She is actually Draken, or Dragon, if you will, and the first two books kind of detail some of the things she gets up to when she discovers what she is. This is a love story, a romance, but also action and adventure with some paranormal twists. I really enjoyed the way this series wrapped up, although admittedly I don't remember a ton from the first two books. There was enough 
mention of the previous things in this book that I wasn't completely confused, but I do think it would have been a little bit more impactful had I read all three books back to back. But I still overall enjoyed the story and I loved Eleanor's kind of coming of age and discovering who she is and what she wants. I gave this book four stars once again and I finished this book on May 9th. The fourth book that I read in May was a book that I completed on May 12th. This book was actually part of my reading vlog that I did for the Bout of Books readathon, which I will link up here. The book was called The Dead Girls of Hysteria Hall, and it was written by Katie Allender. This book was a ghost story, however, it was not the kind of ghost story that I was expecting it to be, if that makes sense. So here is the little synopsis on Goodreads. It says, Delia's new house isn't just a house. Long ago, it was the Piven Institute for the Care and Correction of Troubled Females, an insane asylum nicknamed Hysteria Hall. However, many of the inmates were not insane, just defiant and strong-willed, kind of like Delia herself. But the house still wants to keep troubled girls locked away. So in the most horrifying way, Delia gets trapped. And that's when she learns that the house is also haunted. So again, this was not quite what I was expecting it to be, but in the end, I think it actually was even better because of that. I found this story pretty engaging. In fact, I read like the last half of it in one go because I just wanted to know how the story was going to wrap up. And I really enjoyed it. In the end, I gave it four stars. If you like ghost stories or paranormal stories, I would recommend you check it out. The fifth book that I finished in May was Atonement by Ian McEwan. I actually listened to this one on audio and I felt like that was probably the best way for me to get through it, which I think now was a very good decision. There are portions of this book that are very, very descriptive and it's very easy to get bogged down in that. So I'm glad that I was listening to the audio and kind of multitasking as I listened because I think otherwise it kind of would have been a bit of a slog to get through some of those passages and the audio just helped me kind of keep going, especially because you could adjust the speed at which the narrator was telling the story, which also helped. This book was actually part of my May TBR. I had spun a wheel and it had landed on adaptation. And this book, of course, was turned into a movie, so it was a really good fit for that prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a brief synopsis. It says, this is the Ian McEwan's symphonic novel of love and war, childhood and class, guilt and forgiveness, and it provides all the satisfaction of a brilliant narrative and the provocation we have come to expect from this master of English prose. I don't know if I would go that far, but it was a good book. So basically, this tells the story of a 13-year-old girl named Bryony who lies about her sister's boyfriend and kind of what happens as a result of that. There is a twist at the end that I already knew about, so I don't know if it would have been obviously more of a impactful read had I not known about it, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless and I did go ahead and give it four stars. I did not love Bryony, however. Really did not love her. I go more in depth in that same reading vlog that I mentioned earlier because this was another book that I finished during the About of Books readathon. I hated her, but I did feel like the story was really well done and ultimately deserved the four stars that I gave it. The next book that I finished was a short little audiobook called Serpentine by Philip Pullman. This was a little novella set in his His Dark Materials series, and I actually completed this in one go. I believe it was only something like 20 minutes long, and I finished it on May 16th, again, as part of Bout of Books. I don't think that this was anything special, but it is supposed to be a story that bridges the His Dark Materials series and then the Book of Dust series. So I have not read the Book of Dust yet, and I figured I would go ahead and just listen to the little novella before I started that one. I gave it three stars. It wasn't anything special, but I did enjoy hearing from Lyra again and seeing what she got up to. So if you are a fan of His Dark Materials, I would recommend checking it out just as another little chunk of the story. The next book that I finished was 
My Shadowed Past, which is written by David Selby. This was an autobiography of his time on the TV show Dark Shadows. Now, I'm not talking about any of the remakes. I'm talking about the original Dark Shadows from the late 60s. And it just kind of talked about his life up, up until him getting cast as Quentin and kind of how his life changed from that point on. It had a lot of pictures, some magazine things that he had appeared in, some behind the scenes photos of when they were filming the show, and I really enjoyed the look into his life during that time. He talks a lot about what the United States was like as well, because they were protesting the Vietnam War at that point, and basically just how that all kind of tied together to make him what he was. He is still an activist. He's very outspoken about things, and you kind of get a glimpse of that in this book as well. And I just enjoyed kind of getting that look into his life while he was filming the show. It's a quite ridiculous little soap opera, but it's also really fun, and it was quite groundbreaking at the time. So I was very excited to see what he had to say about what it was like to film it. In the end, I gave this one four stars as well. I felt like it was just a fun, engaging story for anyone who is a fan of the show. If you're not a fan of the show, you won't really understand much of what he's talking about, so I would say skip it. But if you do like the original Dark Shadow soap opera, do give it a go because he definitely had a lot of stories to share. I finished this book on May 16th as well. This was the final book that I read in the Bout of Books readathon, and it was another book off of my TBR. It was my nonfiction pick for May. The next book that I finished in May was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Scenes. This was another book that I listened to on audio. This has had been on my shelf for ages and when I saw it on Scribd I decided that now was the time to go ahead and listen to it and see what the hype was all about. So the synopsis for this one on Goodreads says Dante can swim, er Ari can't. Dante is articulate and self-assured. Ari has a hard time with words and suffers from self-doubt. Dante gets lost in poetry and art. Ari gets lost in thoughts of his older brother who is in prison. Dante is fair-skinned. Ari's features are much darker. It seems that a boy like Dante, with his open and unique perspective on life, would be the last person to break down the walls that Ari has built around himself. But against all odds, when Ari and Dante meet, they develop a special bond that will teach them the most important truths of their lives and help define the people they want to be. And I would agree. That is a really good synopsis for it. It was just an excellent coming-of-age story. Ari's narration just is amazingly well done. There is a very drastic shift in how he's talking at the beginning of the book to the end of the book when he kind of figures himself out and starts to really grow into who he is as a person. And I just really, really enjoyed this one and I'm very much looking forward to reading the sequel when it comes out. The next book that I read was another off of my May TBR. It was one that I pulled from my TBR jar, and that was Born at Midnight by C.C. Hunter. Now, I actually DNF'd this book at 51%. I just found myself completely uninterested in what was happening. I didn't like the main character, who was also the main narrator. There's supposed to be a mystery, and I just couldn't care less. So. After the, I got halfway through, I just realized that there were better books for me to read and spend my time on, and I went ahead and DNF'd this one. I am not upset about it. It is paranormal. It does feature some unique ideas, but I just really did not care about anything that was going on. So I didn't rate this one. I DNF'd it on May 20. Third, sorry, I had to check my notes. I DNF'd it on May 23rd, and yeah, I'm glad that I went ahead and gave it a go, but it was definitely not worth my time. The next book that I finished in May was Meant to Be by Lauren Morrill. This was the last book off of my May TBR, which means that I did finish my entire May TBR. Yay for that. So here's the little synopsis for the story off Goodreads. It's one thing to fall head over heels into a puddle of hazelnut coffee and quite another to fall for the gasp wrong guy. 
Straight A Junior Julia may be accident prone, but she's the queen of following rules and being prepared. That's why she keeps a pencil sharpener in her purse and a pocket Shakespeare in her, well, pocket. Julia also believes in fate and that Mark, her childhood crush, is her MTB, her meant to be. But this spring break, Julia's rules are about to get defenestrated, SAT word, thrown from a window, when she's partnered with her personal nemesis, class clown Jason, on a school trip to London. After one wild party, Julia starts receiving romantic texts from an unknown number. Jason promises to help discover the identity of her mysterious new suitor if she agrees to live a little along the way. And this begins a wild goose chase through London, leading Julia closer and closer to the biggest surprise of all, true love. But sometimes the things you least expect are the most meant to be. So basically this was just a cute little contemporary story about Julia and Jason, and I really, really enjoyed it. It was a pretty quick read. I managed to finish the majority of it in one day during the Do the Thingathon readathon, and I definitely enjoyed it. It is nothing really serious, but if you want a fun little romance set in London, I say go ahead and give it a go. I did give this book four stars, and I'm glad to finally cross it off of my TBR, considering that I actually had an arc of this way back when and never read it. The last book that I finished in May was Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. I listened to this one on audio, which is exactly how I had read The Raven Cycle, and I am probably in the minority, but I really like the narrator that is reading those books, and I feel like he adds a little something to the story. So I wanted to go ahead and read this series that way as well. I am very late to the party on this. This book came out in 2019 and I just got around to reading it and I honestly don't know why I waited so long. So I'm going to go ahead and read a little synopsis off of it and let you know a little bit about what it's about. Although I feel like this is probably one of those books that everyone is aware of, at least in terms of what it's about. But here's the synopsis. The dreamers walk among us, and so do the dreamed. Those who dream cannot stop dreaming. They can only try to control it. Those who are dreamed cannot have their own lives. They will sleep forever if their dreamers die. And then there are those who are drawn to the dreamers, to use them, to trap them, to kill them before their dreams destroy us all. So this story focuses on Ronan. He is probably the main narrator of this series, although there are some other point of views that happen throughout the book as well, including Ronan's brother Declan. And honestly, I loved those chapters where he was speaking quite a lot because you finally get a little bit into his head. He is kind of off to the side with the Raven trilogy. Ronan is not really a fan of his brother. And in this series, you kind of start to see why Declan is the way he is. But you also have a new point of view from a new character that you're introduced to. And basically, the dreamers are trying to stay alive when there is a group of people out there looking to kill them all. So that is kind of what this book was about. This one ended on not really a cliffhanger because I feel like it was a satisfying ending, but definitely an ending that makes you want to read the next book. And because of that, I'm actually putting Mr. Impossible on my TBR for June. You can watch my original TBR video up here. I made some switches to that TBR because I realized that I was going to have to read that second book because I just want to know what's going to happen. But I really, really loved Call Down the Hawk. I gave it five stars and I would highly recommend it if you enjoyed The Raven Cycle because the writing is pretty much the same. So if you didn't like her writing in that trill in that series rather because there were four books, you won't like her writing in this one. But honestly, Ronan's point of view is just... A plus, and I really loved the story. Now I'm going to do a quick little wrap up. So in the month of May, I read 11 books for a total of 3,193 pages, which works out to 106 pages per day, although that is not how I read it. I went several days where I didn't read anything, particularly this last week, but that is the average of my page count per day. My favorites of the month were easily Call Down the Hawk, 
Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe and the Starless Sea. And the book that I would not recommend you checking out at all is Born at Midnight. So that one was just, it's just not very good, y'all. Don't, don't do it. So that was my May reading recap. I am going to mention some books that I'm adding to my June TBR. So I will be reading, as I mentioned, Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater. I will also be reading Creators by Tiffany Truitt, which is the third book in another series that came in through Interlibrary Loan that I want to go ahead and get read since I'm going to have to return that this our next month. And then I'm also adding Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alex by Alice Oseman to my TBR for the Whatever-a-thon, and I'm very excited to read that one because everyone seems to love that series. So all in all, I am very pleased with my reading for the month of May, and I'm hoping that I can continue that on into June. If you liked this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more, and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.